right, I'm gonna make sure that this is it time. Pretty much time. <laughs> we have, I know. Our we have been getting. Um, oh my gosh, our page has been growing like crazy. That's great. Yeah. Um, especially we are. We 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 we've, we've been doing a lot of work on the uh, on the school stuff, and oh my gosh, on like what schools are gonna do. People are like freaking out on it. You know, I really wish I could have got together with the schools while everybody is at home. I'm still going to try, but there have been so many dogs who have bitten kids because the dogs don't have a break now, you know, yeah. and so the dogs are the entertainment source for the children, and so the, the kids have been bitten in the face, and I wish I could do, like, one of those extracurricular hours. Like, can I just talk to the kids so that, you know, we can prevent some of this stuff instead of, you Yeah. Know, oh, my gosh. <sighs> <laughs> all right is it all right, all right here we go yeah i'll hit it I'll, so i'll just introduce you and we okay. can go from there i'm aiming for like 30 40 minutes we'll see how it goes see if we get questions okay uh, go from there all right here we go oh i need to pull up my facebook <laughs> Hey, so we are live tonight. This is Leah Cook, and she is an expert uh, dog trainer. She's going to tell us a little bit more about that since I am just probably butchering her um, expert <laughs> credentials over here. <laughs> um, but we're going to be talking about uh, leash laws and proper ways to deal with, um, with following the law and also what to do when you, when you encounter lots, uh, not lost dogs or lost dogs sometimes, but uh, off-leash dogs and on-leash dogs on hiking trails in your neighborhood, um, so things like that. And um, But Leah, tell us first um, about yourself and kind of how you got into this business of uh, dog training. Okay, so um, everybody, again, my name is Leah Cook. It's, I'm, I'm very glad that I have the opportunity to talk to all of you tonight. Um, I went to college for electronics engineering. And uh, while my husband was in Afghanistan the first time, a dog broke a door down and attacked us, me and my dog Boaz, who you can see on my shirt here, um, attacked us in the middle of a road. It attacked me first and I fell down and then it proceeded to maul him in the face. Um, anyway, I had to use some drastic measures to end that assault, um, but I have no regrets for doing that. Um, but anyway, that's how I got started in dog training. Um, I, I, there's a running joke with me and my colleagues that I'm like one of those people on Shark Week where they get attacked and then they dedicate their life to understanding that animal that attacked them and they're like an advocate for them and everything else. And, you know, it's sad, but, you know, it, it's true for me. You know, I had to understand aggression and body language to the nth degree so that I, I felt safe. And so that I knew how to help my dog and it really it just turned my life around. I wanted to make sure that I can prevent that from happening to somebody else, if at all possible. Um, so almost a decade later, I am a certified professional dog trainer and I'm one of three internationally certified behavior consultants in the state of South Carolina. Um, and I'm specialized wow. in aggression um, for a long time now. It's my jam. So anyway, <laughs> and loose dog encounters um, in particular have a very special place in my heart because um, like Christina, I have, uh, a, a, like a, I don't even want to call it bad luck, but I have a way of, um, being out when other untrained loose dogs are out. So, um, I've definitely had a bunch of experiences with this and I look forward to hopefully sharing some, um, helpful tips for you guys. So Leah and I, uh, know each other because Leah did this, um, like workshop webinar um, it was supposed to be in person in March um, with, in, in partnership with the Lake Conestee Nature Preserve. Yep. And, um, and I, that's how I saw this, I learned about Leah and her work first because it was all about like, what do you do when you encounter loose dogs? And this happens to me um, almost every single time that I take my, my two little kids out hiking. You guys know I'm kidding around and I know all of you um, love hiking and you know and I write a lot of our hiking um, content and so I'm out all the time with my with my little kids and we always encounter loose loose dogs 
um, who should be leashed um, because that's the law. And my kids are just terrified of dogs now um, because dogs rush them all the time and they cry and they scream and it's a mess. Um, and so I wanted to learn like, hey, what do you do when this happens? Um, and not just the hiking trails, but you know, neighborhoods or where, wherever you may be at parks, this happened to be at playgrounds. Um, and, so, and so Leah gave this fantastic presentation about, <laughs> you know, about what do you do? Because I didn't know. And, um, and now I know a whole bunch of stuff and Leah's gonna tell you guys tonight <laughs> um, and share her knowledge with us. Um, about what you do, and then I've since actually taken my kids um, to Leah as well, where she has helped them to kind of learn how to deal with, with these dogs, and uh, my kids are big fans of Leah also, um, and I'm so, so grateful. <laughs> so that, that's our history, um, and so after learning about, about her and what she does, you know, um, I wanted to to interview her for all of our readers because I, I can't imagine that this is a problem that that only I encounter um, at all. Yeah, <laughs> no, Christina, I you're the only other person that I've heard <laughs> with so many of those stories. It actually made me feel not so bad. So <laughs> hopefully nobody else has it as bad as we do, but it wouldn't surprise me. Right? Either. Yeah. Yeah, I was so surprised because I'm telling Leah like our whole history of like all these times and her face is kind of like, really, this is happening? like. And I'm like, it happens every time. And I'm not going to go into it because it's like so long and all these terrible stories. It like, is long. Yeah. <laughs> and it happens, yeah, because it happens like so often. Um, but if you're readers, if you guys have questions, like, please feel free to ask. Um, and I, we have a ton of questions. Um, so let's just, yeah, let's like get into it. So the first question is, um, what are leash laws and really why are they important? Um, I want to add one more thing before we get started. I had these oh, very important ahead. tips yeah. because I know a lot of things that I'm going to say are going to sound scary, like dogs are these vicious land sharks, like walking around seeking whom they might devour. Okay. <laughs> Fortunately, that's not the case, but I wanted to say these few things before we get started because I am coming at this from a safety standpoint. So a lot of the things that I say might sound drastic, but it's because it's a safety protocol. So anyway, don't feel like if you see a dog, you're going to die or that they're going to immediately attack you <laughs> just from this talk. This is just, you know, I, we're trying to prepare you for worst case scenarios. Okay. Yes. But anyway, if you're not able to retain everything that we talk about, which is the case for everyone, I want you to please remember these two things. So if you don't learn how to read body language, you are going to under or overdo safety protocols. Okay. Like you need to understand the body language on the animals that you are most likely going to come into contact with. If you guys hike as much as Christina, okay, you've probably been watching countless hours of YouTube videos on what do you do if a bear comes out, right? Okay, but oh my you. Oh gosh! How did you know that? All right, but here's the thing. While yes, you can encounter a bear and you should know what to do in order to keep yourself off of the menu, um, you know, it's much more likely that you're going to encounter a dog because they're everywhere yeah. and we live in one of the most dog friendly cities in the United States. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of them are loose, especially when you get out into nature and on hiking trails. So if you yeah. spend that much time reading up on or watching videos on bear body language and how you should respond to diffuse the situation, I want you to realistically look at that and think about how much time should I really be spending to learn about dogs so that I can keep myself, my dog, or my children safe. And yeah. the second thing is just always maintain or create a safe distance from a dog or any animal that you don't know. Okay. I'm ready for the questions now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, those are all good things. I can't believe you know, like how much I look at their videos. Well, you know what? I do it too. So I figured somebody else had to be doing it. Yeah, I totally do. <laughs> okay. So leash laws, like what are they and why are they important and you know, where do they exist? Okay, so at least from my perspective and with all the research that I've done, leash laws are there to protect the public, livestock, and just from everybody from getting into general mayhem, right? So if we have individual dogs or groups of dogs just roaming around, bad things happen. Okay, so this is just for everyone's safety that dogs are responsibly managed and controlled so that we don't have unnecessary injury or deaths with people or livestock. Um, 
among other things. But it just, again, it just prevents the general mayhem and danger and destruction of property. Okay, that's good. Um, where do they, where do the leash laws apply? So they apply pretty much anywhere, but the always the general rule of thumb is that like if you hike and travel frequently, it's always best to just do a quick Google search with the county name, like Greenville County, and then put leash law into the search engine. And that usually will just pop right up because at least around here, um, you know, th there's, you should go ahead and bank on the fact that there's a leash law that's enacted around here. Like in North Carolina, South Carolina, the upstate, Spartanburg, Greenville County, all these places have leash laws. So if you go somewhere far off, like Georgia or whatever, it's always best to just look up that particular county's local ordinances for off-leash animals. Are there places like where leash laws don't apply? Um, other than like what you said, you know, the obvious ones like dog bark and stuff like that. Around here, no, like Greenville County has a general ordinance that any animal that is running at large off of the owner or the keeper's property, like that's mm -hmm. against the law. So unless you are on your own property or on somebody else's property that's given you permission to have your animal loose, like with my animals, we, you know, Mina's search and rescue. And so we have a lot of landowners that let us use their large, large acreage to practice area search. Like she has to be able to work and be controlled off leash because she's got to cover, you know, 60 to a hundred acres as her search area. So we got yeah. a lot of ground to cover, but anyway, unless it's a situation like that in Greenville County, no, the answer is no. Yeah. Um, so you should, I mean, and there's signs pretty much everywhere. Pretty much everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Are pretty there, much everywhere. In some some places, like some of the hiking groups I'm in, you know, somebody will say like, oh, there's there's like these secret places where leash laws don't, don't apply, apply, right? Yeah. Trails. No, so I mean, like, you know, some beaches okay. and stuff, they have off leash hours, like really early in the morning and late at night and stuff like that. But generally speaking, at least in the upstate, I don't know of anywhere legally where you should have your dog off leash. Now I could, you know, stand corrected. Okay. Yeah. If somebody knows of a place that's actually legal, let us know. But according to county ordinances in Greenville County, nope. Yeah. Okay. Um, where, so I'm, I'm thinking about, um, all right. So I asked you about public places. Mm -hmm. um, all right. I'm going to get back to something else later. What about if people follow leash laws, right, and leash their dogs, um, why, why is dog training important? I am so glad you asked that question. Whoever wrote that question, I really appreciate you because y'all just hold on and get ready for this answer, okay? So anyway, <laughs> if you're a dog person and you love your dogs as much as I do, you know that training your dog is not a chore, right? It's like saying, why do you want to spend time with your children? Because I love them, right? Training with your dog allows you to break down that communication barrier so that you can deepen your relationship and make it mutually beneficial for both of you. The dog learns how to communicate with you to get what they want in a socially acceptable way. You get to learn who they are as an individual. You get to bond and fall deeper in love. Like it's great. <laughs> Training is fantastic. Um, so for people like me who couldn't imagine life without dogs, um, we know that training's not a chore, right? So, but there are people who aren't like us and they have a dog because, you know, it's part of the American thing. Like you have a family and you have a yard and you have a golden retriever, right? And so anyway, if you're just one of those people who has a dog because that's just, you know, part of your thing, even if you're not doing, doing it to build your relationship with your dog and stuff like that it's just the responsible thing to do. It's kind of like if you buy a car, you know that you're going to have to get the oil changed and you're going to have to do maintenance on it. Like training an animal, like if you live with an animal, which is what a dog is, I know a lot of people think that they're just little humans in furry capes. That's not the case guys. Like this is a different species and they have their own language and they have 42 teeth and you need to know what they're saying before they communicate with their teeth. So it's just the responsible thing to do. If you own an animal that is capable of doing certain things, you need to know how to communicate and cooperate and control in certain uh, circumstances that animal. Yeah. So, um, 
anyway, I want to talk about leashes, right? Okay, so leashes are simply a management tool. And as a dog training professional, I can promise you that at some point management is going to fail. Yeah. It's going to, okay. For example, leashes break. Okay, or what if the owner leashed their dog to start, but they accidentally put the leash on the little ID tag ring that's like a key for a keychain instead of leashing it onto the D ring that's on like made with the collar. That happens all the time. So as soon as the dog gets interested in something and pulls a little bit too hard, gone, dog's loose. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Leashes are also held by people who are not immune to making a mistake such as it's slipping out of their hands or they trip on a rock while they're hiking and now their dog's loose, right? So anyway, or this actually happened to a client of mine a couple weeks ago. I don't think I told you about it, but anyway, she was hiking in Spartanburg at one of our local trails and a small child was walking a dog that was at least twice his size and the parents, it took them several minutes to get down the trail to where this happened, but their lab actually attacked my client's dog and this child was just scared out of, out of his mind. You know, he's like, well, what do I do? And so my client who also was almost done with her behavior modification for her fearful dog, you know, is being attacked by this dog. So again, leashes, leashes are management and they will fail. Okay. So training, why should we use training in conjunction with responsible management protocols? Okay. Like a leash and training. So I'm going to give you an example. So, you know, a lot of people, they always plan, well, I don't need to do off-leash training with my dog. And I don't mean off-leash, like just out in public. I mean, just for general safety reasons, like your dog's going to get loose from you at some point. So yeah. they need to know what to do. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about, which you could do on your own property. But anyway, so a lot of people, they just plan on keeping their dog in their fenced in yard, which is a physical management protocol, just like a leash. But we all know, how many times dogs get out of the yard or the lawn yeah. guy forgets to latch the gate and then the dog's like, sweet, this is my chance, right? So in those moments, if the dog had training, in addition to this management failure, um, in particular, this is called threshold training. So if the dog sees an open door or an open gate, they know not to do anything about that or to cross that threshold. So that could prevent the dog from getting lost, hit by a car, all kinds of things. So I'm not saying don't use management protocols. Okay. But I think it's just the responsible thing to do to use management protocols in conjunction with training for bad situations, you know, because yeah. accidents happen. That's why they're called accidents. Yeah. So leashes are not the end all be all. You need to be able to, if your dog were to get loose from you, well, you're going to, well, I'm going to answer that for you in another thing. So I won't, yeah. ruin, I won't ruin that one yet, but leashes, okay. even if the dogs are on a leash, dog training is still important for many yeah. reasons. Okay. We had a question from a reader. Okay. He asked, does the, this is Henry, I think this is um, about leash laws. He says, the, does the dog require a, a quote physical leash or does an e-collar count? E-collars do not count, okay? So if, you, if you're talking about Greenville County anyway, okay, I don't know all the local laws for everywhere across the United States, but um, the Greenville County Ordinance, stand by, I will read it to you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> animals running at large is an offense of the County Animal Control Ordinance. Running at large is defined as being off the premises of the owner or keeper and not under physical control of the owner or keeper by means of a leash or other similar restraining order. Okay, so for me, I really hate, now Christina, you know how I feel about this, okay? I do not think well-trained, off-leash, or well-trained dogs are not the problem. Okay, respectful dog owners are not the problem. Irresponsible dog owners who just think because they have a friendly dog or whatever, that everybody should just love them and so they can just walk up to a child because all they wanna do is say hi that yeah. is the kind of person who ruins it for everyone. Lake Conesty, for example. Okay, so yes. Christine already knows how I feel about this. I really hate that dogs have to be leashed or spend the, their entire lives attached to a 30 foot or, you know, maybe they, maybe they don't even get that, you know, for the rest of their lives in a world that was created just as much for them as it is us. So I, I personally hate that that's the way it is, but people don't do the work. And people are disrespectful of other people, you know? So it really boils down to that. Are you courteous? Are you 
training your animal to the highest standard that you possibly can. If everybody did that, nobody would complain, right? Like Christina, if we ran into each other on a trail and my dog was minding their own business and as soon as they saw you, not only did I not have to call my dog, my dog notices that people or other dogs or horses or anything they see on the trail is a cue in and of itself to come back to me. I immediately leash my dog and go off of the trail and then ask you, how would you like to pass us? How can I make you more comfortable? Yeah. Who would get mad at that? Right. Nobody, but that's not what yeah. people do. Okay. And so it ruins it for everybody. So no e-callers, um, they don't count. And that really yeah. sucks. I'm, I'm, I'm for that's that. Hey, I'm for that too. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> Leah, All right. I, when I met Leah, I think she's so, she's so, um, opinionated about this and I love it, but she's very like Southern about it. And she's like, nice, yeah, y'all better hold on. The Southern draw sticks. I know, we're getting there. Okay. <laughs> um, this is from, um, India. And she said, this is so relevant right now. We lay, we ran into an off leash lap dog last weekend and my newish to us 60 pound dog was not having it. Oh, can I comment on that? Yeah. Okay, it. great. Okay. So anyway, um, for me, when it comes down to off leash dogs, again, I always insert the word untrained off leash dogs because there is a distinction. Okay. But anyway, if, if you know anything about dog to dog interactions, you know that a strange or unknown dog running up to the face of another dog usually is not going to go well. Okay, you see that in America a lot because these dogs just don't have the life experience that it takes to know. Like, that's a very expensive thing to do. Okay, dogs in other countries who don't just have somebody taking care of them and a vet's going to come, you know, suture their wounds and all that kind of stuff, you don't see them running up to another dog. Okay, this is an Americanized problem because we have all these pampered pooches, you know, that we keep. Anyway, it's a thing. Okay, but just as a, as a species, Having a strange dog, I mean, imagine the same thing with people, right? Like, even if somebody who was just the nicest person, they do meals on wheels Monday, Wednesday, Friday, okay? They do therapy, all that kind of stuff. They love hospice, okay? Even if that person was that sweet, if they came running up to you, screaming like they were going to jump on you and kiss you all over the face, like, how, how would that go? It doesn't matter how friendly they are. It's rude. It's scary. I don't know you from Adam. Okay, yeah. so when it comes to dog-dog interactions, a lot of times the, dogs that's, the dog that is getting run up on, okay, so the dog that's usually on a leash, you know, yeah. with the owner that is doing the right thing, um, they usually get the bad rap for that because they look like, oh, well, then why do you have him here if he doesn't like other dogs? Yeah. My dog is fine. Like, my dog actually wasn't having a problem until your dog got in his face. So, actually, what is the problematic antecedent in this problem, in this equation? Is your right. dog. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, um, if, you've, if you haven't taken the off-leash or the best practices for off-leash dog encounters thing, I would, or webinar that I do, I would definitely recommend it so that you can learn a little bit more about that and how to keep that critical distance between your body and a dog that you don't know, because that's, that's really important. Where can people find that? Webinar? I am going to be doing that again this weekend and I'm going to be recording it. Oh, okay. Um, so that I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel so that everybody from anywhere, everybody can view it. I don't charge for that. I want to get this information out to everybody. Okay. You know, so that we, we can posted, help people. Um, we posted your Facebook page and your um, website in, in our comments as okay. well. Well, after you, this weekend, it yeah. will be on my YouTube channel. Um, oh, okay. So anybody can go to the Confident Companions YouTube channel after this weekend. And okay. uh, that video is going to be there and it's going to go over all those safety protocols that you already know. Okay. And he says, but the owner kept insisting she's friendly. Ma'am, get your dog on a leash. This is helpful and reassuring. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Yes. Every single owner. This drives me insane. Yeah, they're the problem. Oh, but they're friendly. I don't care. Like, Say it I'm louder for the people in the back. <laughs> yeah. I'm allergic to dogs, okay? You, if you want to bring my inhaler on a trail, go ahead. Like, And my kids are terrified because of your friendly dog. Right. And people like that, you know, those kind of people, honestly, I don't know if there's any way, like, they're so 
unempathetic towards other people and they're so self-centered yeah. because they they're obviously like they can't even they can't even fathom why that would be a problem for you like i don't yeah. know if talking to people like that like personally for me i i don't talk to people if their dog runs up to me i'm just going to respond because i don't really yeah. care about having a conversation with you you've backed me into a corner so based on your dog's absence or presence of a threatening behavior, I'm going to do what's necessary to maintain that critical distance. So I don't really care. I, I'm not going to call out to you if I don't think it, if it's not going to happen. You've, you've already backed me into a corner. I'm not arguing with you. Obviously you're ignorant when it comes to being a responsible dog owner or you would know better. You know that that's not a thing that this species tolerates well. So obviously you're ignorant. So I can't talk to you on an educated, like, that's yeah. just the truth. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. Okay, but this isn't yeah. doggy daycare. This is out in on a walking trail or a park where these animals have no idea who the other one is. And they're, you're just allowing that animal to close the distance and get in that other animal's face. Like they have 42 teeth. What would, anyway, yeah. don't feel bad. If your dog is on a leash and another dog runs up, it doesn't matter if the other dog is friendly. You have two sentient beings who are in this interaction and it takes two to be okay with that. So even if somebody else's dog is okay with it, don't you feel bad for one second about your dog not tolerating that. Don't feel bad yeah. about it for one second. You you probably have a fantastic dog who just had enough and that's okay. Dogs, don't, dogs aren't yeah. perfect, they don't have to be. I'm not perfect. <laughs> okay. okay, so what, um. What are some tips that you have um, for dealing with loose dogs? Like, especially on a trail, you know, and, and I'm gonna let you talk about it because you have some great tips <laughs> that you really helped my kids with. Um, and now we have two treat bags because they wanna both, I have two kids, and they now wanna each carry a treat bag. Will you tell everybody what they do? So, so Leah, um, I, you know, this was a topic <laughs> that we talked about on the webinar, and um, and she said to carry a treat bag um, with like dog treats in it, and you're supposed to, and when a loose dog comes at you, you know, hopefully they're friendly. We talked a lot about body language. This was after the learning about body language talk, and you're supposed to like take out the treats from the bag and throw it right at the dog's face, and the dog will stop, and hopefully that'll give you, you know, the owner enough time to get a hold of the dog and for you to get, you know, hopefully if the owner is in, you know, sight distance and so, right, if they are. Um, and so and if not, I get another handful out and just keep chucking it. Yeah. And I say cookie so, when I do it because most dogs know what cookie means, at least if they're yeah. in an English speaking household. So if you go cookie and then you throw it, <laughs> like my dog just got up. I know your dog is like, what, where? <laughs> oh. So, but, Poor Leah, because I, you know, I don't have dogs personally. Um, like, like I said, I'm allergic to dogs. And, she's, and I was like, well, what do you, what kind of treats do you put in there? I have no idea what dogs like. And she's like, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> yeah, it didn't occur to me that somebody without Aww. dogs would take it. I'm really glad that you did. You know, I didn't yeah, even think really about, good. yeah, I didn't even think about somebody without dogs taking that, but I'm really glad you did. Yeah, we do. And people are like, why are you, I've been asked, especially about my family, like I'll send them photos, you know, of our trail. Of why are you wearing a treat bag? Why do you have a treat bag? <laughs> They're like, you don't have dogs. Safety protocol. Yeah. Okay. And, and so um, my kids have like really gotten into this and um, they've, you know, I'll, I'll tell you like about these situations now, because like I said, we encounter like these dogs every freaking time we hike. And uh, so now, um, especially my oldest, she's, she's like loving it. And now they feel like more confident, you know, yeah. going on trails. Um, except we were at the playground and we ran into loose dogs. So I was like, where's the treat bag? And I'm like, I didn't bring it because I didn't think we'd run into loose dogs. Yeah, they're everywhere, aren't they? Um, yeah, so to answer your question about what I do, so I deal with loose dogs based on the threat they present, right? And we've talked about that before yeah. in the other seminar. Um, sorry guys, I have to readjust. Um, anyway, so for example, if I'm at Legacy Park and I see a dog there and it's playing Frisbee with its owner and there are 10 other dogs walking around on leash and people flying kites and kids running around and whatever and 
that dog's loose, but he could give a rip about all of that stuff going on around him. Like he's completely focused on that Frisbee, bringing it back, spitting it out, like throw it again. Like I, I see what that dog cares about. Um, so for me personally, I don't, re I don't report that because it's kind of like, you know, if I see somebody texting and driving, like I'm not going to call the cops and be like reporting everybody for breaking up. Like, you know, because it happens all the time. Like I would be on the phone all yeah. the time, you know, this. And so anyway, um, for me, that dog doesn't present, at least based on my experience, um, that dog is not presenting any kind of threat. I mean, yeah, it's, it's loose, but again, that boils down to what I think anyway with the training, not that I'm above the law. I'm just telling you, I wish it was a little bit different, but anyway, if I see something like that, if the dog doesn't care about anything in the environment, I, I don't either. I don't really care. Like whatever. I'm, I'm more power to you. I, I guess, whatever. I, I know that there's going to be people who don't like that, who don't like that, but that's how I feel about it. Um, I don't personally report people like that, but it's not the wrong thing if you do. Like, it's the law. They're not supposed to have their dog off leash anyway. Okay. Yeah. Um, but if I see somebody like what somebody had commented about or where they're like, oh, he's friendly. All he wants to do is say hi. And this dog is loose and it's doing everything except engaging with its owner. And it's just wandering around, walking up to kids, and it sees a dog, and it's just like, oh, sweet, this is my chance. Like, if I see a dog that is doing stuff like that, I'm calling immediately, and I'm probably taking video, too, and pictures, so that I've got something to actually give the police. Even if I have to send them an email, like, I'll leave a voicemail. I don't play with that. Like, if you're going to take your dog off leash, and you can't do any better than that, mm -mm. okay, I don't go for that. So... What you can do, at least in, if, sorry, I got off on a little tangent, but anyway, neighborhood, hiking trails, parks, where leash laws apply, at least for me, if I just see some dog just wandering around and it doesn't even care, like it's not engaged, it's not doing anything with its owner, I mean, just at the drop of a hat, it might run up to you too. No, I'm reporting that. Christina, I think your screen froze, or maybe it's mine. Can you hear me? Uh oh <laughs> I can see me only. Guys, I think we're having te technical <laughs> difficulties. I'm going to see if I can get Christina on the phone or email. Y'all just hang tight. we got a lot of good information to keep coming. <laughs> okay, I know I have her phone number here. We're still working on it. I am not frozen. I'm still here with you. <laughs> hmm. Found it. Okay, Christina's emailing me. I lost my connection. Okay, she's coming back, y'all. She said, hang on.
Okay, so while Christina, I guess since I'm still on here, my husband told me I'm still on. So anyway, um, while she's still reconnecting, I guess I can keep going with this. Um, but anyway, the bottom line is if you um, if you want to deal with a loose dog that is you know at a distance from you and you're in a very public place and that owner's just being completely disrespectful and irresponsible with their dog and it's just wandering everywhere. Um, what I would do is just stay at that distance and try to call animal control and see if you can get somebody out there. Um, some people, you know, I've had people tell me that, you know, they go up to the person and they say, well, I've called animal control, so you need to put your dog on a leash. I'm not about doing that with people, you know, no need to, you know, possibly put your safety at risk because, you know, some people, they just get crazy about that. You know, the off-leash dog topic, that is a hot topic. So if you're in a big open space like that, um, I would just stay at a distance and try to call animal control. Um, so some of those tips that um, Christina was asking me about for, um, you know, how do you deal with dogs if you encounter them? The biggest thing is, again, you're going to have to read their body language. So if you don't know how to read that, again, you're going to underdo it or you're going to overdo the protocols that you need to be following. So if you see a dog that isn't presenting any type of threatening body language, then, you know, reaching into your treat bag and saying cookie and tossing those cookies right at their face um, so that they understand like, oh, sweet. Okay. Hot dogs are raining down. Okay. If it's that kind of dog, just make sure that you stop them with treats. I like to keep at least a 10 to 15 foot distance between myself and a loose dog. Um, just because dogs, they move fast. Okay. And their reaction time is a lot faster than ours. So I like to keep that much of a distance between myself and an unknown dog. Um, well, I think I got another email from Christina. Okay. She said, just keep going. Okay. So we're on the right track guys. So anyway, um, if it is anything above that, like you need to start working through this little hierarchy, but you don't need to start working through the hierarchy on the trail. That's why you need a, a hierarchy of safety protocols and tools. So you need to go ahead and know what body language corresponds with this level of threat and intensity and determination for this animal to actually follow through on all this threatening behavior so that you know what to get out of your pouch or your hiking pack or whatever very quickly. You're not trying to make these kind of decisions, you know, in the moment. You need to go ahead and have all that ready. So if you see a dog that is, for lack of a better term, friendly, okay, you know, they've got squinty eyes, and you can almost see them smiling, and their body's just wiggly, it look, doesn't look like they have a spine, and they've got a low wagging tail, you know, that kind of dog, I'm throwing treats at you, right, um, you're not a threat to me, so I need to stop you, you know, but at the same time, I don't need to stop you with anything like spray, or, you know, cracking a taser, um, anything like that, so, um, Aside from the friendly dog, um, again, you need to know, is this dog presenting a threat to me? And then if it is, how, how intense or determined is that dog? So if the dog is rushing you, all this kind of, like, I really need you guys to just take that video because this is really, I, I spent a whole, it was like 90 minutes going over the different body language signals that you should notice and how you should respond. And there's no way that I can really answer that in, you know, a short little live Facebook live video like this. Um, and I don't want anybody to think that I'm advocating for, uh, you know, spraying dogs in the face who are not threatening. Okay. But the biggest thing is like, you need to have some tools that are actually going to mean business because there are some dogs who, um, find it actually like they get intrinsic rewards from sinking their teeth into another animal or another person like some for some dogs that's fun okay or as soon as they see another dog or they see a human they just skip several steps there and they just go straight at you um, with the intent to do harm and if you're in a situation like that cookies are not going to stop that dog um, you know the citronella spray that you're going to get at PetSmart is most likely not going to stop that dog. So you need to have some tools on you and you need to know what you're doing. Um, if you're going to carry or throw anything other than a cookie at a dog, you need to know what you're doing before you get yourself in trouble. Um, 
so the next question that Christina sent to me was, um, what should we teach our kids if they're by themselves in the yard and a dog approaches them without an adult there? Um, so there is no one right answer to this. And that brings up a, a really good point that we need to have a serious conversation about harboring danger, dangerous animals in our communities. You know, if, if we have somebody, you know, in our neighborhood, or if you have a dog that if you were to drop a leash or somebody forgets to close a gate, and that means that somebody's dog or their child or themselves, like somebody just walking past your house is probably going to be harassed. I'm on the question about what should we do about kids if they're approached by another dog, yes. just so you know. Um, You're doing great, keep going, all right. So anyway, um, <laughs> You know, when I was answering that other question in my mind, I was answering it differently than how you asked it here. So I'm, I'm sorry I didn't have a really good answer for how to deal with the loose dogs. Um, but again, I want to redirect okay. everybody to that webinar um, that I'm going to have on my yes. YouTube channel after the weekend so that y'all can really understand the body language because it's hard to tell you which tool to use if you don't understand the body language, you know, because I don't want you to underdo it or yeah, overdo that's it. That's what we learn a lot. Yeah, that was um, a lot, and I and I heard you say it a lot about what because Leah, you showed videos during that webinar, and it was a lot easier for us to kind of see. Okay, this is what you're talking about. Like okay, that good. Kind of. Yeah, and I really don't want to cram that into like a two off. second or a two minute answer because that's a lot. Yeah, it's hard. You know, it is. Um, yeah. But anyway, everybody should, at a minimum, you should have a treat bag with things that dogs love, like meat and cheese. Okay, so hot dogs, sandwich meat, so those little mozzarella cheese sticks, just like chop one of those things up and put it in your treat bag. Hopefully you won't encounter more than one loose dog. Okay, so hopefully one will do it for the hike. Uh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, back to the question about kids. So like I was saying, there's no one right answer, but again, harboring dangerous animals in our neighborhoods. Like if your dog were to get loose or you were to drop a leash or a gate is open, and that means that somebody's dog or their child or just an innocent bystander is going to be harassed, meaning threatened, um, based on the dog's body language or injured or attacked. Like, we need to have a serious conversation about that dog. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. What do you say for, like, you know, if a kid is playing in the, in the backyard or something and they're, I don't know, they don't have a fence or the or the yeah. gate is unlocked and, a, and the parent's not out there and a dog comes what do they do you know and that's a really that's a really serious situation okay yeah um it really depends on the kid's age i mean honestly i mean yeah. if, if you have a small child that's out in the yard they're probably not very situationally aware they're like in it to win it with whatever they're doing yeah. you know and mm -hmm. they're probably not going to notice until that animal's really close to them so if i had a very small child hey baby um, what I, this is Boaz, everybody. He's my, <laughs> he's my sweet. Anyway, um, if I had a very young child, what I would tell them is to just look away from the doggy and don't touch them and just be, just be still. Don't make any sudden movements. A hundred percent do not run and scream. Okay. Because that can yeah. initiate the predatory sequence for a lot of dogs. And I know that that's, that's a thing that the humans do, right? When we get scared, we run like, most other things, yeah. but I'm telling you, you need to make sure your kids do not run. Okay. That's really dangerous. Okay. Um, if you've got an older kid, you know, I don't know, maybe like eight to 12 or something like that. And yeah. they may notice a dog coming. They should immediately, but calmly get in the house or get in the car or whatever, put some type of physical structure in between yeah. them and that dog don't obviously, you know, and a lot of kids do this. It is so scary to me when I go out to parks and people see, or little kids, they see a dog or they see a doodle, right? I love doodles, but a lot of them, just like myself, you know, if a stranger were to run up to me and wrap their arms around my neck, yeah, like guys, we have to do, we have to, that's not safe for our kids. So, you know, we need to teach them too, like, my biggest thing is try to have the animal. It, anyway, I'm getting off topic. I'm getting on a tangent. Let's stick to this. If you have a younger child, they just need to do whatever is age appropriate for them. Look yeah. away if they can. Do not scream and run. 
Do not flail your arms around. Don't do any of that stuff that humans usually do to keep a dog. Like, don't do that. And yeah. for any, any child, they need to understand that if they're ever, ever knocked down by a dog, or especially a group of dogs, you get in the fetal position immediately. You put your hands over the back of your neck, just like if a bear came out. Yeah. Okay, because dogs, um, they have social and local facilitation when it comes to how they're going to behave. And so if you're dealing with a pack of dogs, I mean, even people's own dogs can join in on an attack on them just from local facilitation. So if you ever, it's terrifying, but they're animals. That's yeah. what people forget. They're like, yeah. oh, no, it's part of my family. It's a human. Like, no, it's not a human. It's a dog. Yeah. And you need to understand what they're capable of. And it's not because they're malicious. It's just how they are. How they are, yeah. Okay, don't mm -hmm. be naive. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so anyway, you know, yeah. if you ever, if you ever get knocked down, not just a kid, like if you're an adult or yeah. if you're elderly or what, get in the fetal position. If you don't have a way to protect yourself or if you've got a shirt or whatever, feed that to the dog. Like if you're being bitten. Yeah. Feed your purse, feed your shirt, take that sucker off and put it in the dog's mouth. Like whatever you can do to put something in that dog's mouth so that you can get away. And yeah. if you see a trash can, like if it's trash day and here's a loose dog in your yard and then it starts charging you, get your butt in that trash can. <laughs> okay. Or if you see a pickup truck, <laughs> you know, yeah. hey, I'm serious. You got to put something physical in between you. I can't tell you how many videos I've watched because this is one of the best ways that you can learn about body language if you really want to keep yourself safe is, and this is terrible, so trigger warning here, but go on YouTube and look up dog attacks. And yeah. you, it's crazy how many times, like somebody could have jumped on top of a car or gotten in the back of a truck or done yeah. something, but they didn't look at the environment. Like, how can I get out of this? It was just like, oh, it's a car. Like they didn't, anyway. So yeah. don't have functional fixedness. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What, um, Here's a, another question too from Cheryl Lynn. She says, if you have a, a loose dog approach you and your dog is on a leash, you pick up your dog and leave them on the ground to okay. interact with the loose dog. Okay, so here's the thing with that. If you have a small dog and you pick them up, you have to understand that you are going to make your dog even more of a target. Okay, but I can tell you right now, if there was a loose dog, I have an eight pound dog. I also have an 80 pound dog. <laughs> If I had my little eight pounder on the ground and there's a loose dog that is displaying threatening behavior coming down the trail at us, I am picking my dog up and I'm going to stop that dog before it even closes in on my critical distance. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. Okay. And I know a lot of people, I can't tell people what to do. Um, you know, but, I, you you can't if you are your dog's guardian and you're their owner right you're their protector they're trapped on the end of a six foot leash flight and getting away from the situation isn't even an option for them yeah okay so if you have a small dog i would recommend that you pick that dog up but you're going to have to do some body blocking you know if you don't have a way and you don't know how to make that dog stop and not encroach on your critical distance then you're yeah. just going to have to do the best you can. Okay. But I have had, um, just to give everybody a reality check, you know, I'm big on those. Um, <laughs> I had a client, it was just a few days after her little dog. Um, it was just a little mix. I don't, I don't know exactly what breed it was, but it was tiny. Okay. It was a few days after his first birthday and they were just on a walk in their neighborhood. And, um, their neighbor had a, uh, had a pit bull and, and I'm not doing breed. Okay. I'm not even going to get on that topic. I'm not saying it because of the breed. Okay. It's anyway, you need to be aware. Okay. But not scared. But anyway, you need to know certain breed traits and be aware of it, but I'm not telling everybody that they need to like go out and, you know, protest against pit bulls or anything like that. There's a lot of really good pit bulls that help rehab other dogs and people and everything else. So anyway, uh, they had met this dog and it was very human friendly. Right. And so everybody thought it would be fine with their dog. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't always go together. Some dogs can be totally fine with people, but they want to sink their teeth into another dog. Okay. So anyway, they were on this walk in their neighborhood and that dog was loose in the front yard, 
no invisible fence, no tethering, no nothing. And so it's, it comes running over to her and she thought the dog was going to be nice, right? Cause she doesn't know how to read body language yet. She hadn't hired me. Yeah. And anyway, she didn't know how to read body language, but she had met the dog. So she thought it was nice and was just going to come over and sniff her dog wrong. Okay. It came over there. It grabbed her dog. It didn't latch on yet. Okay. And there's different types of bites. You've got bite and release, and then you've got a grab bite, and then you've got grab and hold, and then you've got a shake too that can happen. And you need to know what breeds are more predisposed to certain types of bites or just how to identify which one is which um, so that you know how to respond. But anyway, um, it didn't latch on yet. And so she raised the dog over her head. Then the dog started jumping up on her body, knocked her down. She got the dog underneath her rib cage. The dog bit her trying to get to her dog. It finally got her dog, ripped both of its ears off of its head. A neighbor had to come and beat the dog off of, of, of the dog before it killed it. Uh, yeah. It had so much soft tissue damage that the veterinarian didn't even do surgery for 24 hours. He didn't think the dog was going to make it. Oh the God. dog's ears are literally sewn back on its yeah. head. And one of them's lower than the other. Oh my gosh. Okay. I, so yeah. what I'm saying is no. I would not leave my small dog on the ground if a huge dog, even if it was another little dog, like little dogs can be nasty, right? Yeah. Okay, so anyway, uh, absolutely not. I would not leave my little dog on the ground. I would get them up into a safer place with me and then I'm gonna stop that dog. Yeah. I'm not just gonna try to keep them up and hope that that dog doesn't knock me down too. No, I'm gonna stop you. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. You're not going to knock me down. I'm going to stop you. Okay. And that's really, that's the attitude I have about it. I've been put, you know, I've had medical treatment yeah. done when an yeah. animal sunk its teeth into my body. And I've had to hear my dog scream while another dog mauled him. So yeah. until that happens to somebody else, I don't want to hear anything about, oh my God, you're taking it too far. Like when you've been in yeah. that situation, then you come talk to me. If you're just joining us, go back to the beginning um, <laughs> about why she's so passionate about dogs and dog training mm -hmm. um, because she was attacked herself and um, she gives, she gives the story. So go, you can go back to the beginning. Yeah. I promise you I'm not scary all the time. I'm just passionate. We're just <laughs> passionately crazy. discussing this. We are. Yes. <laughs> um, I thought this was a great question. This is from one of my, my coworkers here at Canary on Greenville and she, Hi. she's, or a specific command that is more important than any other to make sure is learned by a dog before you start taking them on trails. Okay, so um, if I had to say, like, my general answer is no. Like, dogs need to know a lot, <laughs> you know, just to be safe. Like, they need, they need to know a whole lot of things. But if I had to pick one cue that people would teach their dogs, it would be to stop that dog's movement with one word from the owner. And that yeah. goes for leash dogs and dogs that are loose. You should be able to stop your animal with one word. And that could be just stop moving and you're still in a stand or it could be an emergency down. Okay. Yeah. But come when called, um, I would, I would still say that just stopping their movement, that would be my go-to. If there was one thing that everybody in the world would teach their dog, um, it would be to stop their movement before they do something that's going to, you know, possibly end their own life or injure somebody else. But on the more proactive side of things, if there was one concept that everybody would teach their dog, it would be uh, my version of do nothing training because a companion animal that goes everywhere with you, like realistically, they need to know how to do nothing about a whole lot of stuff. Like when you see a dog yeah. or when you see a child or you see a horse or you see a goat or a bear or a deer or whatever, you should do nothing about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then we don't even have to call the dog back. We're not having to stop his movement because he's already choosing to do nothing about it on his own. Like it's, it's a really, really nice thing. And yes, if you're wondering like, is that a thing? It's definitely a thing. All of my dogs understand that. And most of my clients, um, you know, if, if they want to get to that point, they've been able to do it too. So it's not just, you don't have to be a pro to be able to get to that point. What about for, for us hikers who don't have dogs and are trying to like just have a nice time outdoors and we see a loose dog, is there, is there a command or something that we could say that maybe 
I don't know, that in general, like majority of dogs may know or is I want not- people to focus more on creating or maintaining a safe distance. It's not your job to know what that dog knows. Yeah. Like if I had a child, I know how protective I am of my dogs. If for anybody who's wondering, I don't have my own children, um, but I have dogs and I know how protective I am of them. Like I'm not yelling for you to sit. I'm going to toss cookies at you because regardless of what you know, like if you don't mean me any harm, like you're going to stop and you're going to eat a hot dog, right? Like, you know, or some chicken. Yeah. Like if you don't mean me any harm, that should stop you regardless of what you know. So I'm going to go to that, just knowing most animals like food and they like meat and cheese. So instead of wondering about a certain word that you can say, because honestly, you may agitate that animal. Like if you're screaming at them or you're waving your hand and saying, stop, I wouldn't do, I, I don't want, I don't want all you regular people to feel like it's your responsibility to know what to say to a loose dog your responsibility is to keep yourself safe, keep your child safe and keep your dog safe. Okay. So that's not your fault. So that that's at least my opinion. If you wanted to say a word, I would probably say sit. Okay. But realistically, you know, if that, if that owner hasn't ever, they probably haven't, right? Because their dog is loose and out of control and they can't regain control of it. Right. So, most likely yeah. they have not taught that dog within the context of if you're loose and someone tells you to sit, this is what you should do. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I want you to focus on maintaining a safe distance so that none of you end up in the hospital or are scared yeah. to hike for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I would recommend. Oh, and I did have this. Um, this may be a little tip. Um, but you were asking me, you know, are there things that you hi- that I carry when I hike? Um, <laughs> you have like an arsenal, I've learned. That is the truth, okay? So anyway, <laughs> um, you were asking me about a feral dog too. So feral dogs, um, yeah. it should really be like encountering a wild animal. Pardon me. Yeah. Um, if, if you see a wild dog or a feral dog, yeah. they should just run away from you. I mean... I wouldn't be super concerned about that. They're usually really wary of people. It's kind of like running up on an alley cat. You know, they're like, oh gosh, a human. Hi. (laughs) Okay. Um, But, you know, as Christina was saying, you know, it's a running joke that, you know, I'm like a walking arsenal, but it's true. Um, You know, if you can't tell by now, um, I'm very serious when it comes to personal protection. Um, I'm also a big advocate for the Second Amendment. Okay. Take it or leave it. That's me. And so anyway, um, because of this and because I've been attacked before and I don't intend on going to the hospital again, uh, yeah. based from another dog, um, or having to hear my animal scream again. So, um, based on that, um, I have a treat bag full of really awesome, yummy treats, you know, for the, again, mm-hmm. the dogs who aren't displaying threatening behavior, I just need to stop them, you know, yeah. um, treats. My next thing, um, in this hierarchy is going to be a taser, not to actually make physical contact with the dog, but the noise that it makes. I choose a taser over an air horn simply because if cracking the noise doesn't stop that dog, I've got something that I can back that up with. Okay, an air horn, you blow it, and if that doesn't stop the dog, well, you've got an aluminum can. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) What are you going to do? Like, bash it, like, what are you going to do? So, for me, um, because you're you're going after a noisemaker, like that would be the next progression for me after a cookie would be a noisemaker to try to knock that dog out of that level of arousal. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of research that's done that certain types of noises are processed in a different part of the brain so that they can actually hear that versus mm-hmm. your voice and you screaming at them and stuff like that. So anyway, I would go to a noisemaker next. And again, the taser would be to break that dog out of that, hopefully scaring them long enough that the owner can get their, you know what, together and get a hold of their dog. And if you do something like that, though, whether it's an air horn or a taser or whatever, you need to condition your dog to that. Okay, yeah. so for those so of you, don't pre- yeah, yeah, because you don't want to make that a bad situation for your dog, like you're trying to prevent a bad situation. So right. your dog needs to think that cracking a taser and an air horn, like that's treat party time. Okay, yes. 
or you're not helping you're you're not really helping anything now you're preventing an attack you know which is also great but we want to do damage control for our dog who is on a leash we're doing the right thing so just be proactive with that um my next go-to is going to be um police grade pepper gel um mm -hmm. and the reason that i carry that is because after my last uh encounter a bad encounter with a loose dog where you know we were up at pisgah I th did i tell you about that anyway oh, this man. mastiff type dog um actually damaged our vehicle it it, it oh, yes. tried to jump yeah, in the me. window and was crawling in trying to attack us and crazy story. yeah and y'all yeah. i'm sure it won't surprise any of you but the lady got out of the van and as she's dragging her dog off of my vehicle dragging it off while it's going rrr, 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 like making all these yeah. crazy noises he's not vicious yeah like <laughs> what like this like, was real life cujo this dog was crawling in my car yeah he's friendly yeah anyway Fine. Me and me and this dog had already had a standoff. We won't go into all that, but anyway, <laughs> people are, you can't yeah. depend on your safety on other people. Like expect, yeah. like, don't do that. Okay. So you just need to focus on keeping yourself safe. Don't worry about put your dog on a leash. Like, yeah. when does that really help though? That, right. I mean, like when does that really help? Right. You yeah. know, if that person was actually courteous, you wouldn't have to be telling them that anyway. Okay, no, so I, they're I, not I courteous. Guy, um, after after I took your your class, I was like, all right, I'm so psyched, I'm gonna go and like hike. <laughs> and I get on this, I get on a trail like in the middle of the week, you know, where people are like, oh, it's fine, there's nobody on the trail, right? Um, and this older guy had this little dog, and I was like, can you please put him on a leash? And he thought I like, I don't know, told him to jump off a cliff, and he was like. I had to stare him down and I don't like conflict. I was like, well, I got to do it. And uh, he put yes. the dog on a leash and he walked by me and, and he was like, what's your problem? And he like swung his hiking stick at me with me and my two little kids. I was like, dude. Yeah, that was, that was before the therapy dog session, which I'm not going to go into here. Uh, um, yeah, like there. honestly. I'm telling you guys, I have stories. Yeah, like, me and her both. We, you know what? Maybe we'll have a sit down session with everybody, and we'll just have like a coffee and loose dog story time. You know, right. who knows? But anyway, um, after what, what do you do though? Like, so you're in, you're on a trail or on a playground. Like, we had this question, and we haven't addressed it. India asked this question. Um, she said. You may have covered this, but who do we call if a dog is off leash? How do we go about reporting this? Because a hundred percent, I'm going to do it. And I've already taken photos of these people. So if you guys see me on a trail with the off leash dog, like you're going to get reported mm -hmm. and like, or at a playground, like it's, I mean, you don't, if you don't do this, like nothing's going to change. And by the way, I want to thank <laughs> all of your responsible dog owners, because I appreciate you like more than I can say and my you know my kids and I do and we are just so grateful that you actually follow the law so all of you responsible dog owners are awesome mm -hmm. now you you're responsible ones like you're ruining it for everybody yeah you are ruining for everybody like mm -hmm. and not just other dog owners but all these people who want to go out and enjoy the outdoors and who are who can't because of your off-leash dog or unleashed or, dog or because of you that's really yeah. what we mean because your dog really isn't choosing any of this. You're just forcing yeah. everything on us. Yep. Pretty much. <laughs> okay. So, um, you need to call the animal control unit for the County that you are in. Okay. So if you're hiking somewhere far off, like yeah. you need to call that County. When we had that dog trying to literally crawl in the car to attack us, uh, we drove our happy butts right down to the ranger station and reported it. You know, we yeah. didn't just go home, like Christina was saying, and I say this in my, uh, you know, best practices for loose dog encounters. If we don't report people, nothing will change. You know, if you get out of that situation, okay, and you're unscathed and, and you didn't have to go to the hospital, if I hadn't reported that dog that did that, like the next person who comes by on a bike yeah. with a dog following it or whatever it is, like somebody's going to get hurt. So at least for me, I'm going to take it upon myself to report those things so that I'm helping the person behind me. Yeah. 
right? Like we have to care about stuff like that. And I ha I hear it all the time. And, you know, I hate to sound frustrated about it because I know people are just trying to be nice, right? Like all of you people who aren't reporting things, like really you're doing it because you're nice. So I'm not frustrated at you because you're nice, but I'm frustrated that you as a nice person are, you know, being disrespected like that. And then you want it to change, but because you're nice, you don't report it. Right. So yeah. we have to, like, if you're in your neighborhood, okay. Yeah. And I know that sucks, right? Like nobody wants to piss their neighbor off, especially if you're going to live there for the next 30 years, but yeah, we have to do something. If we don't report it and we aren't being the change that we want to see, then nothing's going to happen. And people, if y'all don't learn anything else from me, y'all know this from, if, if y'all are any, if my, any of my students are here, y'all know the science of consequences is extremely important. Okay. Yeah. If you are trying to change the behavior of another sentient being, you have to give meaningful consequences, period. That's as a parent too. Like if I just say, all right, <laughs> that's right. Now, you know, if you don't pick up your toys and they don't do it, you know, the next 20 times and I don't follow through, like they're not going to do it. Right. I mean, it's the same. It's the same thing for raising a dog too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get that. <laughs> um, well, I programmed like animal control into my phone. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Or like Greenville County because this is how often it happens. And, um, and now that I know like to go, you know, in, to the rangers too, like I, I understand to do yes. that. It's hard because you're, you know, in a forest, I rarely have cell phone service, but I can, I'll take a video, I'll take photos. Um, you told me that when you hike, rarely now that you do because of your experiences, like you bring, you wear a GoPro. Yes, I, I have a GoPro on a chest okay. mount and it's on. Like when I get out of the car, it's on. Yeah. You know, and this is another reason why I'm not having a discussion with this person who's obviously yeah. ignorant, yeah. you know, and unempathetic towards other people. Like they're all about themselves, like, and what they want to do. I'm not about to engage in a conversation with you. I'm going to do what I have to do to keep myself and my family safe. And it's all on video. So whatever is about to unfold based on your dog's behavior and the absence or presence of threatening behavior, it's all going to be on film. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yeah, that's smart. It's hard. I mean, I, I should wear should Especially wear when, I mean, we live in a very litigious society, right? Yes. Like for me, like I said, I'm very pro Second Amendment and just being able, you know, to have a firearm with me, that makes me feel a lot more safe, you know, because I have that force equalizer if I ever were to need it. Um, right. But anyway, you know, having a camera in my van, you know, if somebody were to carjack me and then, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, home security cameras like it just makes sense for me to have a camera on you know yeah. when I'm going for a hike because you know as well as I do like almost every time we go out I'm like it happens and like Christina said honestly I don't even hike with my dogs anymore that's how many times that's how aversive it is to me yeah you know and I hate it you know I wish in a perfect world that everyone would train their dog and not only did everyone who doesn't even have a dog, you know, could have a great time and dogs did not impede on their ability to enjoy the world, but dogs could also enjoy the world too. That would be a perfect situation for me, but unfortunately we don't live in that. So they need to be on a leash, you know, for everybody's safety. Like when you are in a public place, like you don't own that. Okay. This is for everybody to enjoy. It's a privilege that you and your dog are able to be on this property, you know, and people just act like it's theirs. Yeah. You know, and then we lose privileges. Like, you know, what we were talking about with Lake Conesty, like half of their trails aren't open to dogs now. Nope. You know, no. and that's going to keep happening. No. I can promise you other parks are watching. Yeah, that came as no surprise to me at all. I mean, they must have had to endure some terrible things to make that decision. Yep. Um, you know, for, so some like damage, like significant damage to the, to the preserve. Yeah. And that applies to us too, to us humans. Like we shouldn't go places and hike and leave our trash. It's the yes. same kind of thing. Like this is, we're supposed to take care of it and to make it enjoyable for everybody and for our kids too. I've seen I've seen some discussions about, you know, about how parents like, well, you don't, you shouldn't let your kids like, you know, run around and you trample know, everything. 
Yeah. That's and that's right. the same thing with dogs too. Like if you're going to, yeah. if, if you do off leash training, like where places where it's, it's fine. It's like, just like if you were on the beach, right? Like you shouldn't let your dog just go climbing on the sand dunes. Like you, if you're going to do that, like your dog needs to know how to walk on a trail. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's honestly like everybody thinks this is impossible to teach a dog how to do this. It's really not. It's a lot of work, but it's not like, just yeah. like, like I said, at the beach where your dog can be off leash, you still shouldn't just let them do whatever they want. Right. You know, I mean, you yeah. need to be respectful of the environment and of other people and other dogs and pretty much everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if we're not respectful, then privileges get taken. Right. I mean, I've seen a ton of, um, waterfalls, <laughs> for instance, they were, yeah. they were off, they were on public property and then they were bought by owners and the owners were like, I've seen what a mess you hikers leave. I'm taking over this waterfall. I'm not going to be allowed. Well, that mm -hmm. sucks, right? Because yep. of like irresponsible people. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's bad, you know, it's bad for everybody because all of you responsible dog owners have to pay for the, you know, for, for what these irresponsible dog owners are doing and that, yep. you know, that I feel bad for you guys. <laughs> I really do. Um, Does anybody have any other questions? I've seen, I think I, I see 23, but I can't, <laughs> but I know you've been, I think you've been manning that. Yeah, I've been, um, yeah, India says not being able to bring your dogs hiking because of irresponsible others is so sad and frustrating. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know the feeling. Yeah. Um, Tatiana, I'm so sorry if I didn't say your name right. She says that more and more breweries don't allow dogs anymore. Yeah, I'm not surprised, you know, and yeah. this is one thing that, you know, at least that I've seen at the breweries that do allow dogs. Um, mm -hmm. A scary thing for me is that, you know, when people go to the shelter and they adopt a dog for the, like the first day, right? Or mm -hmm. if they have a dog and they know it has issues with other dogs and people like, do you know what most people think that their dog needs? Um, no. Oh yeah, I forgot you don't have a dog. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, socialization. <laughs> They think their dog needs to be socialized. Like this uh -huh. is a developmental period in the dog's brain that ends around 13 to 16 weeks. It's just like human kids, like they have developmental deadlines. Okay, dogs uh -huh. do too, it just happens a lot sooner. So anything that your dog has issues with or wasn't adequately exposed to before 16 weeks of life is gonna be a desensitization issue from that point forward. So exposing them or you thinking that you're socializing the dog by taking them to a brewery, right? Where there's lots of dogs or the dog park yeah. or whatever. The first day you adopt a dog and you don't even know that dog or your dog has issues. And so you think they need just, they just need to get used to it. That's a really dangerous thing. But a lot of people think that that's what their dog needs. It yeah. happens all the time. So for me, I'm not a huge fan of places like that. Like it, not the places in general, but just, I think the yeah. idea is fantastic. Okay, mm -hmm. but we live in an, in an unperfect world. And for me, like my dogs are my family. So I'm not gonna take my dog somewhere where I don't know the dogs and I don't know the people yeah. and what's about to go down. Yep. That's, but, but that's me, but. Yeah, Tracy says all dogs leash at all times. I don't care how friendly or obedient they are. And I think it should be strictly enforced. Mm -hmm. I hear you. That's what we're talking about. Tracy, um, I think we got, yeah, and then Tatiana says, my leash dog doesn't tolerate other leash dogs. Doesn't tolerate other leashed dogs? Yeah. Yep, and so that's something, too, that, you know, people need to work on, too. It's one of those situations where if I were to drop my leash, right, this is where the training and yeah. the management come into play, they're like teammates, right? You know, we don't want to, even if your dog is leashed, we want to make sure that you know, we're still, you know, training the dog so that if I yeah. were to accidentally drop the leash or they were, you know, barking at the other dog and they were to pull, like, can I regain control? So right. training and management still go hand in hand. Leashes are not the end all be all. Training too. Michael says, thanks for the info. He's the one who asked about the e-collar. He says, I'm a responsible dog owner of a well-trained dog. It's a shame having to accommodate for the ones who need to be leashed. Sorry, Michael. Yeah, I hear you with that, Michael. Yeah. I'm in, I'm in that camp. I know it's a I know it's a strong divide, okay. Um, but I have yeah. the utmost respect for. <laughs> do what? Says, you probably just like more than the rest of us. You know that's really sad. I know it was like an everyday thing. Yeah, 
the more you do with your dogs, unfortunately, or the more you do with your family, you know, you're more exposed to stuff. Right. But I want to keep doing it. And that's why I contacted Leah to help me with my kids. And um, they love her. You know, I wish, I don't wish that dogs were more human aggressive, but I know that sounds crazy. That For people who aren't a dog trainer, you're going to think I'm nuts by saying what I just said. But at the same time, like most dogs, when they're lo like, if they are aggressive, they're usually going to target your dog. They're not really going to, they're usually not going to target you. Yeah. Uh, which that's what scares me the most about hiking now. Like if a dog were to try to just attack me, like I got you, like yeah. I can read your body language and I'm going to stop you. Okay. Yeah. But it scares me not being able to know 100% like I can protect my family or my dog. Right, that is scary. That's, That's what scares scary. me, and I'm sure it does with you, too. Like, if it was just oh, you hiking, like, you know what you're doing, but your kids are depending on you. That's yeah, a that's lot of stress. Yeah, mm -hmm. it makes me crazy. Yeah. So, exactly. anyway. Tatiana says that this was very informative. Good, I'm glad to hear that. I hope yeah. I didn't scare anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a serious topic. It is. It's a scary topic, and, um, you know, it's controversial in a lot of places, unfortunately, where it's just following the law, right? Yep. Um, yep. So, Leah, I'm, we're going to put your, all your information is in the comments about, uh, except your YouTube channel, which I will put in the post. I'm going to put all of this information in the post so people can reach you um, and then see your um, training session, which I personally recommend because it's been so helpful to me. Um, and I'm sure it will be helpful to everybody else. And then you also do dog training. You're a super certified person. Yeah. <laughs> yes, very important. If you do have a dog, you want to make sure that you've got somebody who is educated. Like dog training can be in the dark ages still. So you need to make sure that you're working with someone who is credible. Um, and unfortunately, experience is not always like you think that, well, they've been training for 25 years. They must know what they're doing, right? Well, yeah. You know, maybe they've been doing the same thing or the wrong thing for 25 years. Okay, so you need to be careful <laughs> yeah. with that, okay? Like, I have to do, like, last week I went on vacation. Like, this is how addicted to education I am. I did over 23 hours of continuing education units because my husband was like, you're not working while we're at the beach, <laughs> you know? And so, anyway, I was like, okay, I'll just, I'll just slip this in over here. <laughs> like, make sure that you find a compassionate, um, firm but fair dog trainer. <laughs> Well, thank you, Leah. I so appreciate your time, and I and I definitely um, I know that this has been helpful. Thank you, even Christina. Even though I've heard a lot of it, but it's still it's great. So I hope it helps our readers and uh, anybody who needs dog training. We, we recommend Leah for sure. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. I hope this helped you. All right. Good night. Okay, we're off. <laughs> <laughs> Are we off? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're off. Yeah, you know, I was like, I know I scheduled like 30 minutes, but I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so much longer because I think that you have so much information.